program. On the line with us, our old buddy Peter Montgomery, the research director uh, with the Overseas Right Wing Watch, People for the American Way, PFAW, rightwingwatch.org or pfaw.org are the websites, Right Wing Watch on Twitter, People4 on Twitter, Pete Mont, P-E-T-E-M-O-N-T, -E -E uh, Peter Montgomery's, uh, uh, well, X handle. Uh, Peter, welcome back to the program. I, uh, I, this Project 2025, you've been writing about it, and I, I think a lot of people... You know, they've heard about it, but they really don't know what's going on, or they think it's just some little thing that the Heritage Foundation came out with, you know, this following on its uh, mandate for leadership that goes back to the Reagan era. I, number one, what is it? And number two, how is it different from previous efforts to help Republican presidents? Sure. Well, in the Heritage's own words, it is a plan to take the reins of government uh, when Trump or another Republican president takes office. So they uh, believe that Trump was uh, stymied in his first term from accomplishing all that the right wing movement would have wanted him to accomplish. So they have set a game plan. They have a 900 page battle plan uh, for every uh, uh, government department and agency. They have plans to purge tens of thousands of professional civil service employees to replace them with MAGA loyalists so Trump doesn't have to uh, stumble over anybody telling him what he wants to do is against the law, as he did in his first term. And they want to uh, end the independence of uh, law enforcement agencies like the FBI and the Justice Department, as well as uh, independent agencies like the Federal Communications Commission, which oversee the media. And they want to do that so that Trump can use the full power of the federal government to take revenge on his personal and political enemies. So, you know, on one hand, you could say this is uh, part of the tradition of heritage, which does these mandate for leadership policy wish list documents that they've done since the Reagan administration. But this is uh, just an order of magnitude different. And in addition to laying out this battle plan, they are uh, recruiting and pre-vetting uh, thousands of MAGA loyalists to fill the jobs that they hope to create by firing uh, the professional civil service employees. And uh, I saw them at CPAC. Uh, Heritage was there recruiting people to uh, get their names in the database. Wow. I, they're, they're trying to come up with 20,000 people because they're going to do Schedule F and, and fire basically the, the cream, you know, the, the top lo level of management of all the federal agencies in America. Do I have that right? That's right, and 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 maybe not just the top level. One of the groups that is uh, part of Project Twenty Twenty Five is actually focusing on more junior people. Mm. So they're recruiting young people who uh, watch the Bannon show online and others to be ready to be the foot soldiers, to be ready to fill lower level positions. So they're looking not only at the cabinet and the managers, but really uh, how to um, you know just have give Trump total dictatorial control over the over the executive branch. I've been been watching the Heritage Foundation slide farther and farther to the right. I mean, uh, a decade or so ago, actually, we used to get guests from there all the time. In fact, our, our studio when we were in Washington, D.C. was literally the building next door to the Heritage Foundation, which they eventually bought, and, and we ended up uh, having to move the studio. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they seemed reasonable. And then uh, Jim DeMint came in and, and they started getting very, very Republican partisan. Prior to that, it, my sense of it had been that they had been more about conservative, you know, individual conservative issues. And now they've got this guy, Kevin Roberts, running the place. And he seems like almost a, a, a QAnon guy. I mean, how, how, how radical has the Heritage Foundation become or am I misreading this? No, I think you're exactly right. That's the trajectory. They were always very conservative. They, uh, you know, often were very kind of intellectual. They had a lot of uh, intellectuals on staff and, and, you know, would have policy debates. But uh, Jim DeMint really started moving it to the right. And as you said, uh, Kevin Roberts, the current president, is just full on MAGA. And he's, he's very clear about that. And um, the guy that they have running Project 2025, you know, is uh, just clearly a flat out culture warrior. He's always on Steve Bannon's show. Uh, recruiting people, talking about, um, you know, the the MAGA agenda that they're going to be able to uh, to do, and 
you know, one of the other people who's part of this is Stephen Miller, who uh, most people know as the architect of Trump's, uh, you know, severe anti-immigrant policies. And he's been bragging about how aggressively Trump's anti-immigration policies will be. But that's not it. That's not all he's talking about. He was at CPAC uh, just talking about how um, conservatives have to jettison uh, this libertarian ideology, which used to be the hallmark of CPAC, and just to to embrace the raw use of government power to uh, punish their enemies and to impose their will. And we've seen the whole conservative movement go in that direction, whether it's Ron DeSantis or whether it's the Heritage Foundation and the increasingly aggressive uh, Christian nationalism we see throughout the Republican Party and the MAGA movement. Yeah, this piece that you published on Project 2025, we're talking Peter Montgomery. Uh, there, I, I read it over at politicalresearch.org. Um, you, you note that, uh, first of all, you're quoting one of these Project 2025 people who says, when the founders spoke of pursuit of happiness, what they meant might be understood today as, in essence, pursuit of blessedness. Uh, this is an individual, th that is an individual must be free to live as his creator ordained. Uh, they also uh, say that um, uh, declaring that environmentalism is not a political cause but a pseudo-religion meant to baptize liberals' ruthless pursuit of absolute power in the holy water of environmental virtue, um, that they are anti-feminist, anti-choice, anti-LGBTQ, uh, calling for Amer government power to restore the American family, uh, that the federal government must protect fertilized eggs from the moment of conception calling for criminal action against uh, distributors of abortion medication and decreeing that religious business owners should be able to ignore non-discrimination laws. Um, this all sounds pretty extreme. Is that, are, are these actual solid examples or is this just stuff from the fringe of the report and the effort? Or is this no, the core to it? That's solid examples. Yeah, that article, I encourage people to read it. It's at uh, Political Research Associates, the Public Eye magazine. It's available online. And yeah, people can can look through the Heritage Foundation's report. Most people don't want to plow through 900 pages, but you can you know, take a look in the table of contents. You can look at the agencies and issues that you're interested in. You can see uh, you know, the disastrous um, climate agenda you have. You can see the horrific uh, restrictions on uh, bodily autonomy that you just mentioned. And, and you know, we see how this is not, uh, these views are not fringe. We just saw the Alabama Supreme Court declare fertilized eggs to be humans. We uh, are the current Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, and 125 uh, Republican House members have signed on a legislation that would declare uh, fertilized eggs to be persons from the moment of conception. And one of the main architects of the uh, religious right anti-gay movement, a guy named Robert George, who's a Princeton professor, not a fringe guy, he urged the Supreme Court to do that in his amicus brief in Dobbs the decision that the Supreme Court used to overturn Roe, Robert George urged them to declare that fertilized eggs were people under the 14th Amendment and to require every state to treat abortion as homicide. So uh, that's, you know... It's very Catholic. The the Alabama Supreme Court is, you know, we've talked about, sometimes we talk about dominionist Christians and Christians who are, uh, believe in Seven Mountains dominionism, uh, which is that that the right kind of Christian should should be in control of every aspect of society. Well, that's what it looks like in action. Mm -hmm. Here's the Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court quoting the Bible, citing God as uh, the reason um, uh, for his ruling. And um, you know the consequences would be really far reaching yeah. if these people have more power than they already have. Yeah, can you imagine if, if a Supreme Court Justice was quoting uh, Thor or Odin? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, it would it kind of put, a, put the point to it. But uh, it's remarkable. So, uh, Peter, how is this? Is Project Twenty Twenty Five like? Is this solid? I mean, if if let's say Trump loses in four years from now, some other Republican becomes president, um, they're still going to have this, right? This, this this is not something that's unique to Trump. This is the new direction of the GOP. Do I have that right? Yeah, I think that's right. And you know, this is really. This is the culmination so far of what's been going on for 50 years in our country. You know, in 1972, Lewis Powell, pro-business guy who would eventually become a Supreme Court justice, wrote this memo warning the business community that liberals were taking over in colleges and universities and the media 
and uh, that they should fight back. And that started this you know, massive investment from right-wing foundations and right-wing corporations, billions and billions of dollars to build the huge right-wing infrastructure we have now. The Heritage Foundation is at the center of that, but uh, you know, they've got 100 organizations uh, who are joining them in Project 2025. So uh, they've been successful in taking over the Supreme Court. Would it, now they want to do uh, the rest of the government. Right. And um, so, yeah. So would it be uh, safe to say that this is a pet project of America's right wing billionaires? Absolutely. It's that, that you know, th this is just very distressing. Uh, Peter Montgomery is the research director. He oversees Right Wing Watch, rightwingwatch.org, uh, uh, Right Wing Watch, at, uh, at Right Wing Watch, the, t the Twitter. Uh, uh, and PFAW, People for the American Way. Peter, thank you so much for dropping by again. It's great talking with you. It's always great talking. Thanks, Thanks for having me. My pleasure. We'll be back on the other side of the break. Does the First Amendment apply to social media? What, what's that all about? We'll talk about that in just a moment, and I'll be picking up your calls.